The United States has authorized the deployment of American military personnel and resources to Saudi Arabia. The Pentagon said the decision was made by Acting Defense Secretary Richard Spencer. It added that the move would provide what it called an additional deterrent in the face of emergent and credible threats. The decision comes after Saudi Arabia's King Salman approved hosting American forces in the kingdom. The Saudi Defense Ministry official said the move is aimed at increasing joint cooperation in defense of regional security and stability and to preserve its peace. Dr. Marcus Papadopoulos, editor of Politics First, joins us from London. And we also have Dr. Jalal Fairuz, analyst and Middle East expert, who also joins us from London to break this down for us. Um, so, Dr. Papadopoulos, one conclusion that can be reached here is that Saudi forces are not able to handle this so-called credible threat, so they need to call in the U.S. to help them assist it. Is that one way of looking at this? Well, deploying American troops to Saudi Arabia is hardly conducive to fostering stability and peace in the Middle East. On the contrary, it only risks increasing regional instability and it only risks increasing another war in the Middle East. Now, I certainly do sympathize with the notion that the Saudi military is an incompetent one. It's a barbaric one, but its military performance in Yemen has been woeful. But I think ultimately the decision of the Trump administration to deploy 500 American soldiers to Saudi Arabia for now is due to a ongoing and concerted campaign by the Americans to ratchet up pressure against Iran. The Trump administration is exploring all ways, is testing the water, so to speak, about how is the most effective way of bringing the Iranian government down. And I believe, firstly, and most uh, importantly, the Americans believe that economic sanctions on the Iranian economy um, is the most um, viable option, in Washington's view, of doing that. But also, um, increasing military pressure on Iran by deploying American soldiers to Saudi Arabia is another way of placing, in the Americans' opinion, in a, is another way of placing pressure on uh, Iran. But also, we have to bear in mind this. The Americans are increasing support to the brutal terrorist organization, MEK, which has been waging a diabolical war against Iran and the Iranian people uh, for nearly 40 years. And of course, the Americans are training MEK terrorists in Albania. And of course, Albania today is a client state of America. So I don't think we should read too much into the American deployments of American soldiers to Saudi Arabia. I don't believe that this marks the beginning of a possible military campaign by the Americans against Iran. I believe the Americans are still posturing, and I believe that by deploying troops to Saudi Arabia, it is another way of stoking tension with Iran. Mm -hmm. Possibly the Americans are looking to provoke the Iranians so that they can give them, they can give, the Iranians can give Washington a pretext to take another decisive act. Do you think, Dr. Jalal Fairuz, that that is the case, that the U.S. is using this uh, as some kind of psychological warfare, but at the same time uh, provoking Iran uh, to uh, pretext if Iran wants to react uh, for waging a war with Iran? Uh, let me explain, please, that uh, uh, this time uh, it is the Saudis who have asked the Americans to come in. And uh, by the way, uh, the, in, uh, in, in, in some uh, of the uh, uh, Saudi tweeting, uh, uh, very uh, people who, who know about this, the internal situation say that the Saudis have uh, said that they will be taking care of the costs of the uh, American soldiers who will be deployed to Saudi Arabia. Now, uh, let me tell you a few facts. First of all, America probably uh, will gain some, somehow uh, because it, it will have another ground, and especially uh, in, inside Saudi Arabia, but it's not a very big gain because it already has 
so many thousands of soldiers in the area uh, uh, closer to Iran. They have uh, uh, around 5,000 soldiers in, in, in Al Aidid uh, uh, base in Qatar. They have another uh, uh, three to 4,000 in uh, Al Doha uh, uh, American base in Kuwait. They have also around uh, one to 2,000 soldiers oh, and also the fifth fleet in Bahrain, not to mention, of course, uh, uh, other uh, uh, prisons of the uh, American forces, whether it is in East Syria or it is on, on the, uh, the, the, air, uh, uh, the, 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 the big ships in, in the Persian Gulf. And uh, in, uh, now, nowadays, it is more in the Indian Ocean. But the thing is that, let, uh, let's, let's put it in this, this, this uh, context. Uh, just uh, a week ago, uh, or, or around the re a week ago, uh, UAE uh, said that it will uh, pull its forces out of Yemen. Now, the Saudis are so scared that uh, they will be by their own facing uh, the Yemeni forces, and, and th they will need some backup, really. They, they, are, they are frustrated, they are very uh, uh, unstable, so they, they want to have the American forces there. Now, it is, it is very uh, 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 contradicting that just in the past uh, uh, six months, the Saudi media was bombarding Qatar for uh, uh, allowing uh, Turkish forces in Qatar. They were, uh, the Saudis were talking, the Saudi main state media was talking about uh, Qatar not being uh, independent anymore. The, uh, Qatar is occupied by the Turkish forces. Now, would, would it be the Saudis would be occupied by the American forces? And will, will, it, will it be uh, 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 without independence? Uh, actually, yes, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Saudis do not have any independence on their foreign policy, defense systems, now, on the other side, you could see all the expenditure, billions, not millions, billions, billions and billions, and actually hundreds of billions are spent on military in Saudi. Why, why the hell do they need American forces? Uh, it, that means that it is a total scare in Saudi. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. Dr. John Afoli, who is analyst and Middle East expert there from London. Also, thank you, Dr. Marcus Papadopoulos, editor of Politics First. And that does it for our news review.